how far into the future there was a mission to go to the end of space and collect samples. The problem was that the mission was so long, it took more than a lifetime to collect them and return. So a group of scientists got together and created a program to train small kids from very young age to become astronauts. Our hero is one of those kids. From a very young age, he trained, he prepared himself, and then when he was 18, he was good enough to be assigned on a shuttle and took off. As his shuttle crossed the atmosphere, it exploded, leaving the, our hero flying in space, slowly being dragged down back to Earth by gravity. And as he was floating, he thought to himself, all my life I've been preparing for this mission, for this lifelong dream, and now it ended so prematurely? No. Maybe now as I'm going to cross the ozone layer, my body is going to burn, my suit is going to burn, and I'm going to look like a beautiful comet in the sky. And maybe somebody down there will see me and have an inspiration, have an idea, or just going to have a little better day than he used to have. And as I was thinking that, a mother and son stood on Earth. And the mother saw the comet and told her son, wish upon a star. And the son did. And when she asked him what you asked, what you wished for, the son replied, I wish that one day I'll be an astronaut. Winning or losing, good or bad, true or false, heroes inspire us, makes us follow our dream, or just have us a little bit better ways to improve our own life. I'm a photographer and I'm a storyteller. And what I hope to do through this talk is to explain you a little bit more about stories, heroes, and what they can do for us. A few weeks ago, I returned from China, South China. I photographed a group of fishermen called Yin Bao. Um, it's a group of fishermen that use trained birds in order to fish. As a storyteller, I start beginning studying about their culture, about their lifestyle, fishing them while hunting with their children in the river and the mountains. Photograph about their everyday life. The, the fishermen I photographed use light in order to control the birds in the water, fishing very early in the morning or very late at night. And the more portraits I took, the more I fell in love in this tradition and their lifestyle. And I started investigating. I, I, I found out um, one of the fishermen told me about his favorite bird. His name was Damao. Damao was a very big, strong bird who only wanted to fish the biggest fish, even if they were way too big for her. No coincidence that Damao means big idiot. The more I started learning, then I also went to the tradition itself. I realized that fishermen traditionally would live on boathouses floating on the river and migrating with the fish who are their livelihood. And they would rarely step on land, usually trading their fish with other villagers. And when a fisherman became too old for this lifestyle, his sons and grandson would take him to shore, build a cabin for him, give him everything he needs, and leave him there. And after a lifetime with his family of fishing and migrating, suddenly the old fisherman would be still on land, gazing outside the hut on the river, waiting for the fish to come back so he can see his son again, daughter, grandsons, his family. This fisherman, I tried to take his portrait and I couldn't stop him from gazing out the window, gazing and waiting for somebody to come by. The truth is that more than 40 years ago, his son and grandsons left fishing and moved to the city and he hadn't seen them for years. Storytellers give us a certain angle about what they, what they see. They give us something to try to inspire us or change our minds. When I told you this story, how many of you thought about the last time you talked to your grandparents, your mom and dad, or just talked to somebody you cared about or cared about you? The other thing I want you to take from this story, that a hero doesn't have to be heroic. An 83-year-old lonely fisherman from South China can be as inspiring and as effective as Hercules. One of my favorite projects was photographed last year in Bayan Ogi province. I flew there in order to document a very ancient tradition of Kazakh eagle hunters. Kazakhs who use trained golden eagles in order to hunt foxes, marmots, small wolves. What drew me to them was their style of preservation of their culture. Unlike in China or Kazakhstan, the Kazakh living in Mongolia maintain their tradition with almost no touristic nature. A matter of fact, a matter of fact, they are the last one on earth deserving the title 
of eagle hunters. For them, it's merely a name, but a way of life. And when I flew over there, I did everything right. I got a car, I got a guide, I went to meet a family far in the mountain. I spent a few days studying their names, their everyday habits, photographing them. And when I felt things were enough, we took horses and went to the mountain to hunt. And I photographed the father of the family sitting on his horse with the mountain in the background, holding the eagle high in the sunlight. And as I was coming back from this shoot, seeing the images of the back of my camera, I felt like something wasn't enough. I mean, I've been shooting Kazakh eagle hunters in West Mongolia and the Altai Mountains. But the images I saw and the stories I told felt a little bit too similar to other stories I've seen throughout my visit there or previous in my research. I want to try to find a little different angle, a little personal angle as a storyteller. So I went back into my research on Mongolia. And I realized that Mongolia, modern Mongolia, is a relatively young country. If you ask most people around the world what they can tell you about Africa, they can t still tell you a couple of things, even if they've never been there. They can tell you lions, fascinating tribes, jungles. What do you know about Paris? What do you know about New York? But when people are asked, most people, about Mongolia, they've been facing a huge question mark. At that moment, I realized that I need to change my journey. I need to change my story and try to stop taking a portrait of an old, Kazakh eagle hunter from the 12th century, but the future. Try to make a portrait of the successors of those traditions, kids who are going to be the ones taking it into the modern age. And at first, everything was just like a child story. You know, you, you walk around and you knock on the first door and the, the kid is too young. You knock on the second door and the kid is too old. You knock on the third girl, door and the kid is just right but they are not Kazakhs or eagle hunters. And the more you look and the more you want to see it, you finally find it. And one not so special day, I met Irka Bulan. Irka Bulan was the first kid I shot for this project. I still remember the first day I came to their house and you ran out the door and you, you know this aura coming from children when they're doing something they love, something that makes them feel good. He was glowing. We took him to the mountain and we started taking our pictures. After I took this image, I knew this project was something I fell in love with. And it so happens that Irka Bulan is the perfect beginning for this photo project. He's not an eagle hunter. He's a trainee, making his very first step in this tradition. Tradition-wise, there's about 1,500 ways of hunting and training an eagle. And every family develops their own special technique. In a way, every family is unique. So when I photograph Irka, I also try to focus on his training on the mountains with his dad. After a few days, I decided to, keep, to push this project forward, and I was looking for a new dimension. That way, I found Bach Birgen. Bach Birgen is the youngest eagle hunter in Mongolia. Usually, children start at the age of 13, and it takes about five years to become a hunter. When Bach was eight, his father decided, you look strong enough, and started training him, making him, at the age of 14, a full hunter. Now, if you start looking at the images, you see that it's a bit of a combination between a documentary project and an art project. I usually ask the people I'm photograph for things. Not necessarily I want them to do them, but I want to have their reaction. So when I shot Bach Birgen, it was really f I always used to ask, can you kiss the eagle? I didn't want him to kiss the eagle. I just wanted to have that first look of, what? And that second moment of genuine smile. But Bach Birgen was a hunter. And the second I asked him to do it, he just took the eagle's head and just waited for me to keep going. What else do I want? This connection inspires me to feel like I'm doing something right. After I shot Bach Birgen, I knew I had enough time, budget, and energy to shoot one more kid, the last kid of the project. And again, yet again, I wanted to have a new approach, something a little different. And because this project is dealing with the question, what will be the future of this tradition in the modern age, I started thinking, why not I, as the storyteller, will give my answer? When I come 10 years from now, what would I like to see here? And I came to this idea of having an eagle hunt dress. And I started asking people if they heard of something or knew of something. And everywhere I go, I had shut doors and joch, 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 which means no in Kazakh. Luckily for me, as part of my process, I always keep the people involved 
the people I'm photographing involved in what I do. This is, by the way, our mountain office. Um, and those are two hunters I shot. And in the middle stands my guide, who was really enthusiastic with my project. And the second he heard I was trying to find Ingle Huntress, he made a couple of phone calls. He told me, listen, a good friend of mine is a hunter. He has a daughter roughly in the right age. Why don't we give it a go? And we did. And we went to their house, and we showed them the images. We talked to them about the project. And they were actually really excited to be a part of it. And the next day was amazing. I don't know how to describe this feeling of being an artist. Have something in the back of your mind as a possibility that you would like to see and then have it visualized in front of you. When I shot Eshel Pan, 13-year-old Eshel Pan, I always compared her to the other boys I photographed, noticing that although she was as young as they were and as unexperienced as most of them, she was so much more confident, comfortable with an ego. At that time, I had a different summary for this project. It was about 15 minutes before we had to leave. All our, all our bags were already in the car, and I asked to talk to her dad in person. We went aside, and I asked him to ask him two questions and have a sincere answer. The first question was, how is it for you to see your daughter like this, with a Kazakh hat, clothing, on the mountain, sending the eagle away and calling him back? He said, oh, it was good, it was good. All right. And seriously, would you ever consider training her? Making her Mongolia first eagle huntress in more than a thousand years? And I was expecting a funny maybe or an honest no, but his answer at the time summarized the project for me when he replied, until two years ago, my eldest son was my successor. I'm an eagle hunter, my dad is an eagle hunter, our entire family has been eagle hunters for hundreds of years. But he was drafted to the army two years ago and became an officer. So he probably won't be back for our tradition. And for a few months, I've been actually meaning to train her. But I would never do it unless she asked me to. Being a huntress, being a successor for a tradition, means fighting for it, means being passionate for it. And at that moment, I realized that having an eagle huntress is a possibility. But like many other things around the world, it's one more thing that women need to fight for and not wait to receive. And that was it. I took the images, we drove back, I went back home, wrote down the story, and uploaded the images to the internet. And overnight, it exploded. In a matter of a few days, Ashel Pan was all over big media websites, magazine calling to put her face on their cover as inspiration. Overnight, Eshel Pan became a hero. In a matter of a month, I received more than 4,000 emails, people asking if she's real, if they can write a letter to her, if they can meet her, or if they can even have her picture printed in their home as inspiration for themselves and for their children. And that way, Eshel Pan became a lion. She became a hero, not only for people in Mongolia, but around the world. And you know what's the problem of being a hero? You know what's the problem about being a lion, to be somebody that people look up to? Nobody asks if you're all right. Nobody asks if you need help. I was fortunate enough to be able to come back to Mongolia and give those letters and magazines to Eshel Pan. Sometimes a hero doesn't need to have big support. Sometimes it can only be recognition. The understanding that what she is doing or what another hero is doing is important and not meaningless for others. And once she saw the images and her family saw the magazine and the story, things change.
If you want to see the ending of this video, you're going to have to wait to 2015 when the movie is going to be out. <laughs> but things changed. Eshel Pan went into the journey of becoming Mongolia's first eagle huntress. Now, I'm not suggesting we should all leave our jobs and find an eagle and become hunters. But I am suggesting that if everything is more obvious than this, children are the future of Mongolia. They are going to be the ones taking it into the modern age, into the next chapter. Kazakh, Khalakh, Buryat, it doesn't matter. The div immense diversity Mongolia holds create an enormous amount of inspiring, beautiful, and unique individuals. Children who are going to be Mongolia's heroes and leaders in the modern age. Now at that point, I'm going to do what artists do. I don't have answers. I only have questions and I only have ideas. And if anyone is going to determine the future of a country, it's only its citizens. You're going to be the ones to make those decisions. You're going to be the one to push those heroes forward or to become a hero in the spotlight. All I hope is that through my stories and ideas that I've told you today and will tell you in the next few years, I can inspire some of you to act and to push them forward. Thank you.